Strange conversation. Say we're at a party and we're strangers and our vermilion evening gowns kept winking at each other through a sea of black tuxedos. If I walked up behind you and you'd know I was coming because our dresses heat as they near, gently grabbing your arm just above the elbow, leaving a quick white print, pressed my lips into your hair and whispered, there is a moth in Southeast Asia that only drinks blood. You'd never speak to me, would you? And it would be my fault, skipping past names and favorite colors, numbers of brothers and alma maters, past politics and bedtimes, allergies, appetizers, music, to a conversation we could only safely have on the couch, clipping toenails. Why, I need to know. How desperate did this moth have to be to evolve this way? Was the garden so empty of color that he pushed his proboscis into anything until he found red. Terminal uniqueness. The only creature in the world capable of seeing every shade from ultraviolet to infrared, as well as circular polarized light, itself painted like a neon rainbow, is the mantis shrimp. With tubular eyes and raptorial claws, the temper of a tiger, size of a switchblade. It moves with the force of a bullet within aquariums, occasionally shattering the glass, agitated by its own reflection. The bowerbird is not an artist. He collects the color blue, pen caps, paper clips, beetle skeletons, a lost clip on earring, torn corner of a waterlogged postcard, one side the sky, the other my Audrey. He even crushes berries, uses a scrap of bark to smear them on the bower walls, creates a structure of milk rings to the right of the inside out Barbie doll dress, then tests how it looks on the left, moves a butterfly wing through several different placements before deciding it's all wrong instead grabbing a wedge of shattered teacup. Months of arranging and rearranging, feathers, flowers, popped balloons, snail shells, leaves, lip balm tubes, everything to entice a female. And after she has inspected the bower, tasted the paint, once she consents, he does not care if her hopping about knocks a dragonfly from the wall, that the milk rings are now haphazard. If she beats her wings and scathers feathers, bruises some flowers, knocks the whole thing down, decides this bottle cap actually looks better by that knot of yarn, he is still thrilled, never confusing the blue he collects with that of her eye. Cabrito. My grandmother once fed me the goat I had found tethered in the backyard when I was too young to know better than to love. And so now I must confess, I once ate something I had named. But that was how he lived, like flamenco, heels against cobblestone, hands fluttering above our head like bats. We could eat bats, we could eat cobblestone. We could saute guitar and squill down regret and skin mice if we had to. My grandmother would never let me go, hungry. She lived in kitchens while my grandfather wandered the backyard lost in the crowd of his collection. Chicken coops and rabbit hutches erected like tiny skyscrapers. City of just in case, of never miss a mouthful. Feeding the beaks bird seed thrown like rice, a wedding every day, every day a celebration of meat, and the meat would sing, cry, cluck quietly to itself, bob its head, small head, easy to kiss, soft against the lips. And this is the last one. When choosing the perfect pet, leave the pet store. Leave the smell of soiled cedar chips, dried pig ear chews, fresh rubber toys. 
Leave the fish tank wall, the thousand shimmering scales swimming their sail rack. Turn from the division of rats, the ones fed to serpents and the ones condemned to lives of endless plastic tunnels. Don't walk the aisle of muzzles and don't buy the parakeet in love with its mirror. Let the hamsters stuff their cheeks and the geckos lick their eyes without you. Walk out as night chases the streets empty of all but the orphaned and feral. Watch for one that does not run, one that was not waiting, but might follow. Thank you. <laughs>